Um, so as, as Beck mentioned, my name is Jamie Mathewson and I work at Wiki Education. So Wiki Education is a very small nonprofit that is effectively working to improve Wiki, Wikipedia, Wikidata, um, really to help increase access to information. And those are the tools that we use. Um, we can talk more about that for sure. And I do want to have give give folks a second to type into the chat. Um, I see a few familiar names. So I do know that some of you have already applied to the OER Wiki Scholars course. Um, and so I'm just curious what you're hoping to get out of either this session or um, possibly the course, what your questions might be. I'm not planning to get too in the weeds on anything about Wikipedia until we have time at the end. Um, so totally fine if you have really specific questions, I just might revisit that at the end, or you can learn that in the course um, when you participate, hopefully with my colleague Will. So I'll give a little bit of time for people to share what they're hoping to learn. Oh, welcome, Kathy. We're glad you're back. Oh, sure. I'm just asking everyone to share what they're hoping to get out of um, this session or possibly the OER Wiki Scholars course. Any any questions you might have about Wikipedia or um, something you're curious about? And I see some typing, so we're going to give it another minute. Great, Igor. Hoping to see your application come through after this session. We'll see how it goes. Verena works as an instructional designer and is looking for ideas to support Wiki activities. Okay. And Helen is looking to learn how to edit Wikipedia, it looks like, and possibly also incorporate into her own um, teaching and pedagogy. providing editing opportunities for faculty. Great. Hi, Martin. And then it sounds like Jennifer is hoping to um, extend wiki editing into other projects, possibly convening a small group on campus, which is a great idea. Love that. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Okay, totally fine to continue typing there. And um, this is great. This is great to hear. It sounds like similar to what I'm hearing from the applications that have been coming through from this group so far. Um, no surprise to me that people interested in OER and OER researchers are really eager to think about teaching with Wikipedia um, and possibly incorporate this in their own classroom. So. I will super briefly talk about that in a little bit because that is actually the main function of Wiki Education. Um, Wiki Education, I mentioned, we're a small team. Um, we've been for about 10 years now, actually a little over 10 years, we've been supporting university instructors as they incorporate Wikipedia editing into their classroom. So this is essentially asking students to write Wikipedia articles in, in place of a term paper. Um, it is obviously working with the world's biggest OER. So I, I think this fits in hopefully pretty well with the work you guys are all doing. Um, we, we really consider this an open educational practice because they are actively having students engage with OER. Um, and Wiki Education does offer support. We have training materials, we have assignment, um, design consultation. We have a lot of help so that you don't have to just do this on your own if it's something you decide to do with your students. I should. I should definitely clarify because this is such a global group that we work with um, classes, higher education classrooms in the United States and Canada, but we are very connected within kind of the Wikipedia world to other initiatives going on um, and tend to be able to connect anyone who's interested with somebody in their region who's doing similar work and can work with them. Um, okay, so I just made you all type into the chat and now I do have another chance for you to unmute possibly in, in chat with me. I really miss in-person presentations, so we're gonna try to replicate that. 
Um, but I want to pull back and just ask why Wikipedia matters. Why does it matter to you? Why did you show up to this part of the session? Um, totally fine if you just type in the chat, but I'm very comfortable with you unmuting as well if you have microphone access. <laughs> Kathy, we won't unmute you. You can unmute yourself. If folks would like the mic, then just let us know and I'll um, un unblock that for you. Thank you. I'm still not sure how they let you know, but it seemed to have worked out last time. Okay, so Verena says that this demonstrates models of open or models, open learning and gives learners a starting place to go for almost any question. Great. So definitely um, kind of a vast resource where people can get information. In terms of teaching with Wikipedia, Kathy says it feels like students would feel that their work is relevant if it were to be published to Wikipedia. That's what we've been hearing for 10 years. Um, students are more engaged. They, you know, we started the OER session with consider your audience and how much do I think students struggle with that in their work and in what they're writing. They often think the professor is their audience, right? This is who I'm turning my paper into. That's who's grading me. Um, but this helps them really learn this other aspect of communications, build their communication skills by just innately understanding the audience of Wikipedia, which is everyone, right? They know everyone in their family and their, in their community is using Wikipedia. So Kathy also mentioned, um, okay, the agency about whether or not to publish there. That's a really great point. We tell all of our professors, ultimately requiring students to do that is something we don't recommend. Um, giving them an out if there's some reason that they're not comfortable publishing. I mean, this is a public space that they're adding information. Um, Wikipedia itself is provides a space for open learning, open education. It's free knowledge for common people. I like that for common people. Um, okay, great. This is a really good start. Thank you, everyone. Um, I think these are really great points. I mean, if you 10 years ago, even when I was doing some of this work, people were still confused. Why are we talking about Wikipedia in a um, in an education space? And thankfully, we've seen a lot of shifts over that time. Um, and I think ultimately, kind of all along, people have understood Wikipedia is where people are going, right? If you know, some of the early adopters of our student program who decided I'm going to teach with Wikipedia effectively said, you know, I know my students are using Wikipedia, so I'd like them to use it correctly. I'd like to help them develop the skills to learn how to evaluate Wikipedia, how to um, how it works behind the scenes so that they become really active participants in this space and understand the community that creates Wikipedia um, and they become they're not such um, passive users, possibly. So let's just talk a little bit about Wikipedia. Obviously, we all, I shouldn't say obviously, but we all know what Wikipedia is and we presumably use it regularly. Um, so it is the sixth most visited website in the world with 500 million monthly visitors. These are unique readers on Wikipedia, but with about 20 billion monthly page views. So a ton of people are accessing Wikipedia. Um, as we all know, we have a computer in our pocket now, so you often might, you might end up on Wikipedia multiple times a day. It's created by, oh, let me not, let me not do that. Um, it's created by a volunteer community. We call ourselves Wikipedians. And there are about 80,000 active volunteer Wikipedians worldwide. Um, I think this is important to Kelsey and Michelle's earlier point about some of the concerns with OER, which of course we've all heard about Wikipedia. Well, anyone can edit it. So isn't it terrible? Isn't it? Um, isn't it a disaster zone if everyone can edit it? Um, but we know that everyone d doesn't edit, right? There's only 80,000 pretty active people creating this content around the world. So that's a really small percentage of people um, actually creating the site. And something many of you might have heard about before, about 80 to 90% of those editors identify as men in the surveys that we've had. Um, and I, in 2014, there was this, this study that showed, you know, looked into where are people getting their health information online? This is obviously um, important. People are getting medical information. 
And it was very clear that Wikipedia is the number one resource. I would imagine over the last seven years, that number has shot up. I will be interested to see more studies on this at some point. Um, but again, this is not to bring up a discussion about should they be getting health information from Wikipedia or from WebMD or the World Health Organization. It's just where they are getting it, right? This is based on page views. Um, the medical community on Wikipedia is very rigorous because of this, because they know people are making real world decisions and um, it's affecting their behavior and their, I mean, their health, right? So there are a lot of standards around health information. Most likely in the OER Wiki Scholars course, we won't have to get into any of that, um, but it, you should know that there are kind of individual communities within the Wikipedia community that have even their own sets of policies occasionally. So I wanna pull, you know, we talked about the 20 billion page views. What does that look like in practice? This is a tool that um, lets you look at page views. Right now it's looking per day. I pulled this last month and wanted to look at the page about the coronavirus disease 2019. So looking at COVID and seeing kind of how many people have been impacted and have access information during this pandemic. Um, and we really see a huge spike right after the article was created in February, March of 2020. Um, and to probably nobody's surprise, this giant spike here is when the World Health Organization declared it a global pandemic. Um, so I think the point I like to make here is when things are happening in the real world, people end up coming to Wikipedia to find out about it. That makes it, I think, really fun and challenging for the community to respond to current events. Um, there's a, maybe there's, there's a lot of pressure on making sure this is accurate and comprehensive and presents a global view. Um, and, and I think you can find a lot of publications about the really great work that the community did and has done around COVID. So hopefully we can see that, but we can also see 20 million people have referenced this page in the last year. So again, just one year, 20 million people are reading this. This is a massive impact on public knowledge. And that's the whole point here. So, I mean, I think Wikipedia does matter for a lot of reasons, especially the ones everyone was typing and sharing before. Um, but for me, you know, people are looking for information on the internet. They look to Wikipedia. It is a source that in 2021, um, generally people trust and people, and in fact, obviously maybe people trust too much and don't understand how to use it and how to evaluate one page, one article from another. Um, that's a really big goal of all of our programs or, is to help people have that media literacy. Um, but really, Wikipedia is influencing public knowledge. And there was even a study out of MIT a few years ago showing that Wikipedia was influencing scientific literature, right? And so it's kind of incredible the impact that Wikipedia at this point in its 20 year history is having on the public. So I think this makes it a really effective platform for science communication, for communication, um, hopefully for all of you to get more up-to-date information about OER out into the world. That's kind of the goal of our course we'll be talking about. So really quickly, just because we don't have a ton of time today, um, when readers land on Wikipedia, what do they find? I mean, there's, I actually hear, I think more frequently, oh, Wikipedia is totally great. What else could we do? Um, which makes me laugh. Isn't it complete? <laughs> no, Wikipedia is definitely not complete. I mean, obviously things are happening regularly. Um, Wikipedia depends on the published scientific literature that that's what we build on. Um, that is always changing. Obviously, I'm speaking to a bunch of researchers, you know how, how much that can evolve. Um, but even in the articles that exist or even the high quality articles that exist, we see pretty major content gaps. So what I wanna show you here is um, basically a representation of Wikipedia's, English Wikipedia's featured articles. These are, there's about, I think, 6,000 of them. Um, we consider these really the best of the best articles on Wikipedia. They've been kind of peer reviewed. Um, if you submit something through this process, you're really inviting maybe dozens of editors to come in and scrutinize that page. And if we look at the categories um, that are best represented in these high quality articles, we can see that there are over 800 around military history and warfare. There are 490 in sports and recreation, 410 about music, 231 about video games, 53 about engineering and technology, 
50 around health and medicine, 46 in chemistry, 37 in education, 14 in language and linguistics, and 12 in philosophy and psychology. Um, so again, and this is, yeah, it looks like there's getting close to 6,000 now. So um, I think this, some people would draw some gender conclusions from this chart, which I think is, I think it's fair. Um, I think more accurately to me, this looks like a real division and disparity between stuff that's in, I guess we can kind of call it pop culture versus academic topics, right? Um, and there are a lot of reasons that go into this. The volunteer community might not have access to published literature, right? They might only have access to things that are OER, um, things that are open. Some of the community members will obviously be affiliated with universities and they might have access, um, but a lot of people don't. And I've run into this problem as a volunteer editor where I kind of hit a wall when at some point you just don't have any more sources that you can use to expand an article and you have to move on, right? So those are never going to be the most comprehensive. Um, and that's really something I should, I would like to mention that students have as um, really a privilege and often students don't even necessarily realize that privilege of having access to the library, to the resources, to the, the academic sources um, and literature, but they do. And so they're able to come into Wikipedia, do their research and make sure um, that they're expanding the references, the citations, that they're helping bring in new perspectives. I mean, we see students doing just incredible work and finding gaps within existing articles all the time, but it, it really blows me away. And of course, um, for you as researchers, you have that access and you, I think, really uniquely have a comprehensive understanding of the literature, of the lit review in your area, right? So if you're um, trying to remember some of the things people mentioned earlier as their focus on, on research, OER research, but say generally your um, research is in OER, you can look at that OER page and you're gonna see glaring gaps, right? You're gonna see, I can't believe this study isn't represented or there was a pivotal um, publication last year that maybe is totally missing right now. So I think that's really the role that experts can play and why it's so important to bring researchers and experts to Wikipedia and give them the space to learn, well, how does this community work? How does um, writing for Wikipedia work? How does it differ from my typical traditional writing I've been doing in publishing? Um, and that's really what the OER Wiki Scholars course is about, is we will really wanna give that introduction to how you can be successful in Wikipedia. A few other things about Wikipedia, um, this might not apply, be extremely relevant to the work that we'll be doing on OER, but I, I think of course that it's important. Um, only 18% of biographies on Wikipedia are about women. It is getting close to 19% finally, I should say, um, because there's a lot of people doing really excellent work to um, increase the number of women. I like to joke that we don't just go around deleting biographies of men to, to increase this percentage. Um, but this shows really part of the gender gap on Wikipedia. We already, I already mentioned it in terms of the editor base. Um, you definitely see that reflected in content. And so you can imagine how many topics that we might say are related to women um, tend to be underdeveloped and underrepresented. So a really great project to do yourself or with students can be um, engaging them on those topics because especially in higher education, you know, at least 50, if not 50%, 50 if not more, of the students tend to be women now. So a really great way to help change the face of Wikipedia. Just one quick example, I pulled from those featured articles recently. Um, I just went through the history bi biographies, which I think is a funny um, place to put them, but okay. And just through A through H, I wanted to see how many are women. And so I deleted all the men. And so again, these are the highest quality pages and biographies on Wikipedia. And so many of them, are just not of women. And you know, obviously we're not gonna be the people in my talks who say, well, haven't men done more than women? Um, Cause I have heard that too many times, but hopefully we can see um, how much these pages really depend on having new voices and bringing new people to Wikipedia. And so, um, so that's what, why Wiki Education exists. We are really focused on improving um, Wikipedia's quality, its reach, its equity, that's a huge, I mean, that's built into our strategy. And 
we really want to close these content gaps and bring the traditional knowledge to Wikipedia, help open it up, help um, people access this information beyond the paywalls, right? And, and I mean, we can get into all sorts of debates. There have been debates on Wikipedia about whether the only sources that we use should be open. Um, I'm pretty strongly on the side of, of course, closed, you know, access, pay, things behind paywalls should be also cited on Wikipedia because that's kind of the whole point is that you're giving people an overview and helping them um, access that information anyway. Somebody has a question about, we'll get back to this at the end about um, skeptics on Wikipedia. Oh, and here we, here we can see Wiki Education Strategy, which we extended another year, is to really specifically focus on equity and quality and reach. So I mentioned earlier, so the, the two kind of primary ways that we're accomplishing this as a team is supporting students. So our student program, they write Wikipedia articles instead of a term paper. Um, we work with about 400 courses per semester. So we would love to have as, as many of you as, as possible um, join that program, work with us, engage the students. We really work across disciplines. I would say I can't think you couldn't throw out a single subject that we haven't um, supported over the last 10 years. I would say maybe the math might be the, um, we've had the least classes in math, which is a bummer because the math articles on Wikipedia could really use some help. So if you happen to work in math, I encourage you to do that. Um, and we're not gonna talk too much about that today, but I do. I did wanna just bring it up because it sounded like so many people were interested in doing this. Um, the other program that we, oh, there's some statistics about the work we've done. I'm going to skip that. Um, the other work that we program that we started a few years ago is our scholars and scientists program. So we we sort of replicated what we ask our professors and our instructors to do, which is teach students how to edit Wikipedia. But we actually directly do that. So now we run courses, um, virtual courses through Zoom, where we work with a group of people, um, typically 20, 20 people who are working on a shared topic. So in the case of the course we're going to be running soon um, with in partnership with GoGN, we will be inviting OER researchers and OER experts to add to OER related pages on Wikipedia or create new ones. Um, this is something we've been doing for about three years now. I'm really proud of this work. I mean, the students do incredible work as well. Um, and the students really work in high in crazy quantity, right? They add like 7 million words to Wikipedia every semester. They're doing really, really great work. Um, but experts are able to identify gaps in a way that we've never really seen in our other program. Um, as soon as you really take that time to look through, okay, say you select 10 Wikipedia articles about your course topic, or I'm sorry, about your, um, your area of expertise, and you start evaluating them, you tend to come across these gaps pretty quickly. In fact, I think we often have to get our participants to select an article and kind of, okay, now you have to, we need to pick one and start improving it because um, it can feel almost like there's so much to do, which hopefully people will continue doing beyond the course because of course we want this to be kind of a kickoff in giving you the skills on how to edit Wikipedia and hopefully you'll want to join the community long-term. So I'll just share a couple of examples of other courses we've run and some of the great work. Um, one of our partners, 500 Women Scientists, they have a goal of adding women in science to Wikipedia. So we we just actually today, I think we're wrapping up our third course that we are, we're doing in partnership with them. Um, and their members tend to be early career scientists, mostly women um, who are working on, I think generally women, people of color, other marginalized underrepresented groups on Wikipedia and trying to make sure that they add them and that we're expanding their representation and that we're really representing women's accomplishment in science. I'm not going to read through these, but this is just an example of some of the biographies that they have created in the in the previous course that we supported. And several of them end up going beyond biographies, right? Some of them worked on um, the 1987 Chapeltown riot, Black Birders Week, list of African American mathematicians, chloroplast DNA. Um, so, you know, the idea again is that we want to introduce everyone to how to edit Wikipedia. And in this course, they were working on biographies, but some people get really hooked and really excited and just want to continue adding um, information, which hopefully will happen for some of you. 
And then, of course, I think most excitingly, perhaps, is the impact they're able to make. So in the courses with 500 Women Scientists so far, we've supported, we've trained 84 people. They've added almost 80,000 words to Wikipedia, um, over 1,000 references, and they've had more than 4 million views. Um, and we started our first course with them less than a year ago. So they're having a huge impact on um, the public perception of who is a scientist, I think, right? Because people are able to get that information. And then some other topics that we've run, I mean, again, we can do this kind of across disciplines. We worked with the National Archives and Records Administration in the United States to have um, archivists work on women's suffrage topics. In fact, um, about six of the participants ended up coming back together and rewriting the 19th Amendment article. So this was um, a, over a year ago. So they were doing this in preparation of the 100th anniversary in the United States of the 19th Amendment, um, and that they've now written like 68% of that page. So they really previously, before they worked on it, the article mentioned did not mention um, that the 19th Amendment did not give all women of color and all black women the right to vote. And then now there's a lot of kind of comprehensive section about that. So really great equity work that they were doing. Um, another course we ran in kind of fall or before fall of 2020, was an election focused course. So people were working on um, policy issues in their area. Very few people worked on candidates because that can be a kind of a challenge and we, wanna, we don't wanna throw new editors into the deep end. Um, but for example, somebody wrote the article on 2020 Tennessee election. So they were able to have a center, a central place where um, they put a lot of information and resources about what the elections, um, what they were about. So it's a really excellent resource for people in Tennessee. We have also ran a couple of courses um, in partnership with the WIS Foundation around healthcare disparities um, for people with disabilities. And somebody with spastic cerebral palsy ended up rewriting the article. Um, and we have a really great blog about how meaningful that was for her to be able to help change perception of what this, what this, how this has impacted her life. Um, and then we ran several courses in partnership with the Society of Family Planning. Um, they are a research organization whose members are primarily OBGYNs and medical researchers. And they really wanted to come in and make sure there's accurate, high quality scientific information about abortion and contraception. Um, and we, we ended up supporting, I think, about 90 people in that through those courses. Um, and one person, one of my favorite kind of contributions, this wasn't even her main focus of the course, um, but she made a really slight edit in the first sentence of the tubal ligation article that totally changed the definition. So the way it had been for 10 plus years um, really made it sound like a tubal ligation was an abortifacient. Um, and she came in, read that and immediately said, well, that's not true. This is, it doesn't, um, it doesn't stop a, I can't even remember the exact definition now, but basically she helped change it to just be much more accurate about the procedure, which made me very happy. Um, and then we also run Wikidata courses. I just keep casually mentioning Wikidata because um, we started working on Wikidata a few years ago and it's Wikipedia's sister site, the linked data repository. Um, we're really, we really see it as kind of the future of information on um, the internet, if not within the Wikipedia community. So stay tuned. If you join the OER course, potentially you'll, potentially you'll wanna end up participating in a Wikidata one. Um, and then lastly, over the past year, we've been running um, courses about COVID-19 and people have made, you know, worked on so many different types of articles. And one of our participants actually created the page on the COVID-19 pandemic in the Navajo Nation. And it's an incredible resource, um, incredible article that didn't exist until they worked on it. So again, really proud of the kind of equity work people are doing. And I did add just the, the Society of Family Planning, a couple of um, an example, because I think this is more similar to the course you'll be doing where you are subject matter experts selecting an article re related to your work, but also your interest. Um, and you'll be coming in and hopefully add, expanding, um, possibly writing a new article, but really identifying the highly accessed pages, I think is super important. Um, and with SFP, some of the pages that they drastically improved were tubal ligation, self-induced abortion, reproductive rights, medical abortion, doula, uh, 
compulsory sterilization, abort efficient dilation and evacuation, unintended pregnancy, telehealth, postpartum period, um, we could really see an increase in page views for telehealth. And um, one of the other ones they worked on, I think, was you know um, abortion medi or medical abortion or mifepristone, where when the pandemic hit, like there were a lot of there was a lot more discourse <laughs> around this, right? So you can see again the correlation to what's happening in the real world to um, what people are looking for in terms of information. And I think, oh, we ended up supporting 141 of their members. I was totally off. And they added almost 100,000 words, again, scientifically um, sourced, really great and inf rigorous information. And they've had over, over 45 million views. Um, so just a huge opportunity for an impact to the public in a space that in a way that maybe you don't have through your traditional publishing, which of course you're going to keep doing, um, but it's another kind of tool that you can have in your science communication tool belt. So now we're going to jump real quickly into the OER course itself. I just want to give um, a quick overview, hopefully I've kind of conveyed what that will look like. Um, kind of logistically, the course runs between May 25th and July 1st. So we run six week courses. We, re we meet um, once a week via Zoom. So we have really six hours of instructional time. And then you'll end up work selecting an article related to OER. Um, and that'll be the focus of what you're improving over the course, during the course. And the application deadline is April 30th. So you still have 10 days. The application takes like seven minutes. It's a very, it's not, super invasive. Um, I know some of you have already applied, so hopefully you didn't find that too overwhelming. Um, but the team at GoGN will be selecting participants and will also be selecting based on people's availability. So scheduling people across the world for a synchronous course can be challenging. Um, so as you will see when you, when you take a look at the application, um, there are two potential times that we'll be having those Zoom meetings. And we record them, so the occasional missed course is not a huge problem. You can um, you can access them. Only the people in the course can access those recordings, um, but you can catch up. So it's not a huge deal. And then we have other materials that you'll use in addition to the one hour that you have with your peers and with the course instructor. Um, we have online trainings that we have created. So anything from learning about Wikipedia policies um, to evaluating articles and some of this, you know, some of this will, you will not necessarily, it'll be a refresher for you. Um, but it is important to, to understand how does Wikipedia approach these things? What are the policies that we apply on Wikipedia that you really need to follow? Otherwise, your work will end up deleted, right? Because that's a huge thing we want to avoid is you putting all of this energy and effort into this work and then not seeing it actually last. Um, and so these are some of the types of trainings that you'll be taking during the course. And I just, we're not going to read through this, just took a quick uh, screenshot of one of our um, Slack channels. So we, you'll have a Slack channel among um, the 20 participants and my colleagues, Will and Ian. And I think it's a really kind of a more in real time way to get support. So maybe the courses are on Thursdays, but on um, Tuesday, you have a block of time when you're able to really do your work for that week. And they're always there if you have questions that come up. Um, people also just share you know, resources they find or articles that are interesting. Somebody shared that they were having fun with queries. So this was a Wikidata course. Um, glad to see that people have fun. And then I want to show the dashboard. So the Wiki Education dashboard is the software that we've created for both of our programs. So if you teach with Wikipedia, you would also use the dashboard. Um, we have a page for every course we support. So there will be one for the OER Wiki Scholars. This is an example. This was a Black History Wiki Scholars course we ran in February, where participants were adding biographies of notable Black figures to Wikipedia. Um, and this is where I had those screenshots earlier. So you can see a lot of really great um, quantitative information and impact to Wikipedia. Articles created, edited, how many words did we add, how many references, how many views. So that can be fun during the course. It's mo you know, it updates every few minutes. So it's kind of a, um, hopefully a motivator for people. But more importantly, this is really where you follow um, your weekly assignments. We, we don't really want to, the whole point of this is to provide structure and not throw people in the deep end. Um, and again, we have 10 plus years of experience br of bringing new editors to Wikipedia. So this can really help you access 
um, the different trainings you'll be taking, what your assignment is each week, what your discussion topics might be in the course. We're not going to flip through all of this. Um, and then ultimately, it also helps us see the articles that you're working on. So some of you will presumably be working on the OER article. Um, many other OER or open educational practice related pages. Possibly you'll work on a page. I mean, I wouldn't recommend you work on the Wikipedia page, but you might work on an article about a specific OER. I saw a lot of you are active with Wiki Educator, so I could see you selecting something like that. And this can be a really fun way to kind of see. I'll just quickly, let's see if this loads. I just up, upgraded my internet over the weekend and it's been much faster, so I'm hopeful. Um, one of the things you can do is we, we can actually see the changes you made to, for example, this was a biography and the purple highlighting is um, what this participant added. So you can see they added a ton as a part of this course. If there are people collaborating on an article, we would have multiple colors here. So it can be a great tool. Um, I imagine people might collaborate on the Open Educational Resources article to get it up to a really high quality. Um, anyway, so this is a tool that we'll be using, that you'll be using as a part of the course. Oh, let's actually click on that. And then the, I did want to bring up, because I keep mentioning, hopefully some people will take on the OER page. Um, that's kind of what prompted us running this course with each other, with GoGN, is knowing that there's a lot of information missing, um, outdated, maybe poorly represented on the Open Educational Resources page itself. So Will Kent, the course instructor, will be very encouraging that somebody, if not multiple people, decide to come together. Um, and this has a really unique resource that we've never had before in that the GMMB team, like Kelsey and Michelle, um, have actually evaluated this page and they've made their own resource of what they think is missing or, or poorly represented. Um, we would never tell people to just take that resource and make those edits because a really big part of this is learning the Wikipedia um, policies, what's allowed on Wikipedia, coming in with your own perspective. But it could be a really, we're gonna make it available to anyone in the course um, who's working on this page. And it could be a really great just reference and resource to kind of get you started on, okay, I agree, um, such and such section is totally missing, um, or this maybe doesn't represent a global view and I wanna select um, something in my country. So I think this is kind of a unique opportunity because they, have done some of the evaluation work that you will typically do in the early stages of the course. And that in, is going to lead us into questions. So I want to give everyone um, the chance to ask some questions. I'm going to end my sharing here. The chance to ask some questions in the chat. Again, you can unmute if you'd like. I know I saw that there were questions. So I'm going to, while you type, I'm going to um, come read these. Thanks so much, Jamie. That was fantastic. Um, I think if folks want the mic, you can raise your hand. I think I think I saw a raised hand earlier as well. Um, oh, okay. Helen, did you have a question earlier, or okay? Great. Thanks. I did see. Igor's question about whether we have, it sounds like you're looking almost for a similar guide that um, GMMB has around OER best practices and communication. I'll have to look and see if something exists outside of Wiki Education. I don't think we've ever created this before. I think this might be um, in line with, rather than continuing to share people's negative um, conceptions or misconceptions about Wikipedia that we want to really just share the positive opportunities. But I will, I'll look into, I made a note, so I'll look into whether there is something like that and um, that I can find and I'll send it over to Beck to hopefully distribute to participants. Thanks so much, Jamie. Um, Kelsey, I've made you a presenter as well in case you want to um, come in. While folks are typing, I did have a question um, from a uh, someone who wasn't able to be here in today's session, which was about using Wikipedia in the classroom. Um, so I think... What's the question? 
let's just have a look here um oh, okay. so yeah it was about how to um the timing for this kind of assignment um within a module so this is a question from caroline um and the amount of you know the kind of time that's involved in writing a um, wikipedia article is there a particular schedule or plan that's worked well within um, a semester structure for kind of introducing um, Wikipedia sure. assignment? Yeah, um, we definitely have recommended timelines. Um, the most, I would say at least 50% of our courses do take on the Wikipedia assignment as kind of the a main project of the course. And so they might have a 12 week timeline. I always like to clarify too that the early weeks they're often doing a little bit of work to for Wikipedia um, that they're doing anyway in the classroom, right? They're doing research on whatever topic they've selected. Um, so it really falls in line with if you're replacing kind of a term paper. And then maybe the last six weeks they're doing more of the, the research and writing. Um, we do recommend people don't go shorter than six weeks. I think we've occasionally made exceptions for people to run a four week course if they have a ton of experience doing this. Um, but I don't want to sugarcoat ever to people that this is just really easy to do for the first time and that you can just add it on to your your course syllabus, right? I really like to clear to remind people if you're going to do a Wikipedia assignment, you really have to take something else out um, because you are still embarking on a big um, research project, writing project, and there is the added layer of students having to kind of figure out a different tool than they're used to, both technically, they need to be able to make the edits. That has become much easier over the years because Wikipedia has kind of a WYSIWYG editor. It looks a lot more like anything they've done in Word or anywhere else, um, but they need to understand how to cite, what are the reliable references and sources they can use on Wikipedia. Um, so there's there are definitely a lot of layers so I think most importantly, is just having the right expectations with your students. Um, you could be asking them just to add a section to an article and maybe they're um, doing a six week assignment and in six weeks, they might really only add a two paragraph section to a page, right? Um, and that's a lot, that's a, a big accomplishment for them. So I, I don't wanna downplay that that's a small amount of work. I think the work students do tends to be very different from the work you'll do in the OER Wiki Scholars course um, because they really have to practice their research and their other skills in a way that you don't necessarily, right? You're going to already be very familiar with your topic. Um, so I do think the course can be a really good introduction for people thinking about doing this in the classroom, but I would always wanna give you or prompt you to know, hey, this is going to be still a really different experience for you as an expert than somebody who might be doing research on a topic for the first time. So it can really range. And so um, Beck, to answer their question. I mean, if they had a really specific question, they could, you know, I'm thinking of doing X, how much time would that take? That's something our team can help advise them on. That's great. Thanks so much, Jamie. <laughs> I saw Kathy mention the data librarian talking about math profs looking for ways to help their students develop writing skills. Yes, I think the math articles on Wikipedia are interesting because I've heard from mathematicians and math professors they're very good. They're incredible. Um, I agree. They're very good resources for math professors, um, for mathematicians, for my husband, who is a professional data scientist. He loves to have that access um, to look back and refresh, but it doesn't speak at um, an introductory level in the way Wikipedia really is supposed to. Um, so I think there's a lot of rewriting and communication work that could go into those articles. So I, I definitely encourage you to mention that to your data librarian. Um, let me see what Satya said. Oh, whether there are lecture notes on Wikipedia or teaching aid for teaching math. Um, I'm not sure if that exists somewhere. I'd have to look into it. It's definitely not something we've done. We do have, um, we create subject specific guides for students. So we have a lot of these similar trainings that you'll go through in the course. Um, they have materials around editing Wikipedia, but we've created supplemental subject specific materials. So if they are working on a biography, we have guides, you know, specifically what types of um, information should you add to somebody's biography. And then more, you know, of, that's kind of broad, but if they're working on, I think we have things for, um, if they're working on a species article, there's guidelines. So we have a lot of those. We definitely don't have a math one. And that's really because 
it is the the discipline we've supported the least in the work we've done. And so we build those materials in partnership with um, the, the people who've done this in their course. But all of our materials are open source. So um, even if you're not in the US or Canada and you're thinking of doing this with your students, our, all of our materials are available on wikiedu.org. You can find links um, and they're just all on Wikimedia Commons. So I would give the caveat that it's for English Wikipedia. Um, because every Wikipedia, every language Wikipedia is built by its own community. So they have different rules and policies and our materials are geared towards um, the policies on English Wikipedia. That said, English Wikipedia is kind of known as being the most um, challenging space of any of the language Wikipedias for the most part. So usually if you follow kind of a policy from English Wikipedia somewhere else, you're probably pretty safe. Um, but I just, I, I know we have people in other countries and possibly doing work in other languages. So I wanted to clarify. I'm trying to see if I missed anything else. Somebody just mentioned that for um, teaching with K-12 students, focusing on the reliability of information and verifying resources was a really key argument to get people doing that. Um, I would like to disagree a little bit, um, only in that people are always looking to me to tell them that Wikipedia is reliable. And what I really want is for them to teach their students the skills to understand that no source is reliable or unreliable, right? It really depends on the in individual. Um, I mean, this is, doesn't just go for, you know, things that are crowdsourced. This could also be true of the New York Times that there's there are a lot of indicators for quality and um, reliability. And so I, I just want to make, I think that's something that teaching with Wikipedia can help students achieve without, you know, having that critical media literacy without explicitly thinking that's what they're doing. So I do think it's great work to do in K-12, in higher education. Um, I would say in K-12, there are opportunities for people to add to Wikipedia, but maybe fewer than in higher ed. And that's definitely my bias. I know there are people out there doing really good work, um, but the community can be a challenging space for newcomers. Um, so if you don't really have research, writing, and communication skills, and then on top of it, you're trying to um, actually change something in content, then there are a lot of things you're grappling with. So I would just consider K-12 assignments potentially being more about evaluating and learning about the behind the scenes versus necessarily engaging, at least in, let's say, K-8. <laughs> Although we have Wikipedians for sure who are quite young and have been very successful. Okay, I don't, I'm gonna see one more since typing, but she just might be, I'm gonna see if that's a question. Sure, that's a really good point. Group assignments. So even in, in at university level, um, I always recommend people evaluate their students' capacities and their skills before they dis determine what the ultimate assignment will be. Um, and working in a group can be a really great solution. Hey, four people are going to work on improving this one page that gives them that chance to have the collaboration that we're so proud of on Wikipedia, but in real time with their peers um, and maybe a little less overwhelming for them. All righty. I don't think there are more questions. So one thing I want to just, I know I popped it in earlier, um, but I'd like to add Oh, of course I closed it out. I was going to add the, um, I'm going to add it, the application link. Again, just in case you're still thinking you want to do this in, join us in May for the six week training. Really excited. Thanks so much for those of you who've signed up. We have a really, seems like we have a really great group so far. So and here's the link. Fabulous. Thanks so much, Jamie. And yeah, yeah, it's exciting. Not long to go. There's a couple of weeks um, before the deadline. So yeah, please do um, apply. And if you do think of questions later um, after the session, then do get in touch. Um, we'll be making yeah. the recording available shortly as well. But if you do think of other things, then just drop us an email um, and we can respond to those. Uh, Thank you.